This is truly the only way that God is really going to speak to you. Everything in this book is coming to life today and no one will know about it unless we actually like read it, right? Um, I know that's really hard for us these days because we have technology. It's great if you use it for great things like spreading the word of God, but if you aren't, then you're literally going down this never ending rabbit hole of like fear and negativity and all the things that God tells us to be cautious of. Like, I mean, up until a couple months ago, I never really picked up the book. I mean, I had Jesus in my heart, but I never read his word ever. And I can't believe how much truth there is in this word. This is a very intimidating book, but if you just open it and give it a chance, you'll start to see these things come to life. I'm literally still just a baby in this. I feel like a kid again. So it might be a mess, but I never pretended to be anything but a mess. So I got through all of the New Testament and it was confusing in the beginning. And then it started to make sense. Um, as I started reading it, I realized, oh my gosh, like this is the, it, the I, I don't even have words. Like it was so applying to my life and then i got to revelations and i read revelations and i was like oh oh boy like i am in trouble if i do not start getting my life together I, this tribulation is is no joke one day i will talk to y'all about that but we ain't ready for that yet we ain't ready i'm not ready you ain't ready we gotta get there we gotta be so ready we gotta be so ready because, uh-uh, nope, revelation, nope, tribulation, not for me, uh-uh, no thank you. God's blessed me with an immense amount of understanding. He wants me to share his word, so in order to do that, he has to equip me. He's been so faithful to me. He has saved my life, and I am willing to be as obedient as possible for my creator, and that's why we're here. So let me just bear with me because I'm not the best reader, but let's get into it. Um, Jeremiah, I can relate to Jeremiah a lot. Jeremiah was a prophet that was, he was young and um, God gave him these messages. Like, it, you know, he's like talking to Jeremiah, wanting him to share his word. And, and Jeremiah went running to, to everyone to try to tell him, you know, and no one really wanted to believe him or take him seriously. It's really hard when God speaks to you and you know that he's wanting you to share what he's saying to you, but no one will listen or take it seriously. Like, that's the worst. But, you know, I would rather take my chances in doing that um, and know that my place in heaven is secured. Like, I have to be obedient to what he says, regardless of how anyone takes it, um, because truth be told, I mean, not everyone is going to, like, hop onto this. Like, we've been living in a time of such deceit and brainwashing and, and I mean, actual brainwashing, you guys. Like, and so I don't blame people for not taking me seriously, especially after the life I was living. How could anybody take me seriously? But it's not my job to worry about that. My job is to just you know, be obedient to the Lord and, and talk about him as best as I can and pray that people will listen. And, and, and if they don't listen, then at the very least, I maybe one day what I've said will resonate and will, will, they will like, be like, oh, oh, Jeremiah seven. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Stand in the gate of the house of the Lord and there call out this word. Hear the word of the Lord, all you people of Judah who enter through these gates to worship the Lord. This is what the Lord of armies, God of Israel says, correct your ways and your actions and I will allow you to live in this place. Do not trust deceitful words chanting. This is the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord. Instead, if you really correct your ways and your actions, and you act justly toward one another, if you no longer oppose the resident alien, the fatherless, and the widow, and no longer shed innocent blood in this place, 
or follow other gods, bringing harm on yourselves. I will allow you to live in this place, the land I gave to your ancestors long ago and forever. But look, you keep trusting deceitful words that cannot help. Do you steal, murder, commit adultery, swear falsely, burn incense to Baal and other gods that you have not known? Then do you come and stand before me in this house that bears my name and say, we are rescued so we can continue doing all these detestable acts? Has this house which bears my name become a den of robbers in your view? Yes, I too have seen it. This is the Lord's declaration. So Jeremiah the prophet is a young man. The Lord is using him as a vessel. That's what a prophet is, right? Um, a messenger, someone that the Lord is speaking to. Uh, the Lord has a big message and he wants to get that message out. And the way that he does that is through the prophets. So Jeremiah has been appointed to do this and no one wants to take him seriously. They all want to keep worshiping their false gods. They all want to keep, you know, living in sin and committing adultery and, and all this, that, and the other. But you know what? He's still going to tell this message because when the Lord calls on you, you shall not turn your back on him. Jeremiah, he's stepping up to the plate. He's trying to tell these people that they need to correct their ways. They're going to have a place in heaven eternity like the the mansion that he's prepping for us all they will have a spot there if they turn from their ways but they don't want to listen he's saying like act justly toward one another stop judging each other stop judging the poor same people that are preaching love 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 or what are you doing about the situation on the streets i mean personally i'm convicted in this like I need to be getting my butt out there and at least making a difference. I don't have a lot of money, but I have this, okay? And this is priceless. So, I mean, we really need to sort of like check ourselves on that. You know, we judge the fatherless. We're oppressing people. I mean, we're just a totally toxic, toxic generation. But we think we're all that. We think we're so cool, don't we? We think we are just so it. <clears throat> we're not. And no longer shed innocent blood in this place or follow other gods. Hmm. Well, I don't follow any other gods. Really? How much time a day do you spend on the uh, social media? Hmm? How much time a day do you worry about your phone? Look it up. There's a pretty cool little statistic on there that will show you. When I realized that I was spending 20 hours a day, how do I spend 20 hours a day on social media? How? I'm sleeping seven of it. How am I on it? 20? Like, oh my gosh, I was like terrible. And maybe you don't, maybe you don't. But I'm telling you, everywhere around us right now are false idols and false gods, okay? Do you rely on Starbucks? Do you rely on Target? Does any of this stuff come before God? Are you hopping on your game or the internet before you're picking this up and praying? If so, I would probably look at that because if anything comes before our Lord, it's risky. You know what I mean? He has to be a priority. If you're a Christian and you're like, yeah, I know, but I, you know, it's just really hard for me to, to, you know, get, get into this book. Well, first of all, I'd say try harder because this is where you're going to get all your answers. This is the OG Google. Second of all, if you know what, social media, it's a thing. Like everyone is on it. Obviously, I'm still on it. Um, not by choice, but because the Lord has called me to be. But anyways, search in Christian content. The more you do that, the more your algorithm is going to feed you positive Christian videos as opposed to these fear-causing, deceitful, crazy trends and things that we're all just falling for hook, line, and sinker. And suddenly, my videos are positive. They're all making me smile instead of like, oh my gosh, this world is terrible. Do you steal, murder, commit adultery, swear falsely, burn incense to Baal, Baal or Baal, I think it's Baal, and follow other gods that you have not known? Okay, again, our phones. That is the number one thing that is distracting us from the, from the word of God right now. The number one thing, I promise you, isn't for you, then praise God. But for most of us, it is. <laughs> Do you come and stand before me in the house that bears my name and says, we are rescued so we can continue doing all these detestable acts? I'm guilty. Like, I'll sit there 
and cry if I don't have my phone on me for five minutes. I need my phone. I have to have it. It's just like, oh, my life, right? But then I'll go into church and be like, yeah, praise God. I'm totally going. I'm like the best Christian ever. No, I'm not. If I'm putting the phone before my Lord, and if I am letting that take time away from him, no, I am not. Thankfully, God sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for us. Take that sin away. He's so gracious and good. But, you know, we have to do our part. We can't just claim to be these upstanding Christians and, and like claim that, you know, God comes first in our life when he doesn't. I don't want to sit here and try to make anyone feel bad. Or, but on the other hand, we do need to wake up. This social media has taken so much time away from God and my family that it's disgusting for me to think about. But I am so grateful, so grateful that Jesus died on the cross so that my sins could be forgiven. And I am going to keep working on it every single day. Okay. And I'm never going to be good enough. I'm never going to be good enough, but I'm going to try. I'm going to be obedient and I'm going to try. And that starts with start your day with Jesus guys. Okay. Just try it. You'll feel a bunch better. I promise. If you are going through it right now, and we all are, if you have parents that just don't get you and your parents just are just like ignoring you and you're not being heard, guess what? He's up there and he's waiting to hear you and cry out to him and he is there. I promise you he is. He is called the comforter for a reason. He will comfort you. And even though you can't see it, you're going to feel it right here in your heart. If you just like sort of redirect your behavior and your routine, your daily routine to include Jesus in it. And, and I would really highly encourage you to just start your day in it. It changes your life. Suddenly you don't feel empty anymore. Suddenly you feel so full that all you want to do is tell everyone about his love. And I mean it like it's like I've become obsessed with his word. But I had to be obedient. You know, I had to put this down. I had to put it down, out of sight, out of mind, turn it off and spend some time, please. Okay.